In the 15 years that League of Legends has dominated the competitive gaming market, Riot has secretly released a total of 9 different titles under League's IP, some of which you may never have heard of. And as we progress, these games will become more and more obscure to the point that most players may not have even known these games existed in the first place, beginning with the game that existed for just one day known as Cho'Gath Eats the World. This game, originally released on April 1st, 2013, was an April Fool's Flash game in which players would control Cho'Gath and terrorize various locations from around the world, featuring some of our favorite champions. The game included 16 levels, a couple of boss fights, and a fun secret that we'll get to a bit later. As for the gameplay itself, the objective of each level was to rip apart or stomp down every building in the city while trying to avoid as much gunfire damage as possible, but there is of course a catch to this. Though the game may start off easy at first, there are 9 champions featured throughout the levels, sometimes all appearing at once, that will all try their best to stop you in your rampaging tracks. For example, Super Teemo will fly in trying to mow you down with lasers, Commando Garen will try and cut up your health bar by spinning to win, and Resistance Caitlyn will try her best to headshot you right out of the air. And while getting hit by any of these things will more than likely chunk out a good portion of your health bar, the good news is you can of course resolve these nuisances the Cho'Gath way. And once you've completed your reign of terror of the first 14 cities by smashing, stomping, and chomping, your destructive capabilities are really put to the test by the game's final two bosses. Firstly, you'll square up against Battlecast Cho'Gath who will fire missiles at you, deal damage, and require multiple hits to take down, all while dealing with the usual set of champions trying to stop your mission. And once you've won the bout in this mirror matchup, you'll have to move on to your final test in facing a giant enemy Zack who has a variety of different attacks to worry about and can only take damage while split apart. But if you somehow manage to take down both the giant robot and the self-resurrecting green blob, you'll be rewarded with the priceless skin option of Gentleman Cho'Gath, who, when selected, will now allow you to try and beat the entire game in one straight shot and it will reset you back to the beginning if you die even once. But now, going back to this rainbow thing from earlier, what's this all about? If you reach the fourth stage and attack this rainbow, you'll unlock a secret minigame called Astro Teemo that, once selected from the home screen, puts our favorite devilish Yorl in a jetpack joyride inspired game complete with a Neon Cat styled soundtrack remixing his voice lines. This game includes challenges, power ups, and of course the ability to nuke the rat for all the harm he's caused. And while I have a special surprise regarding both these games at the end of the video, let's quickly take a look at the time that Riot released a full on mobile game just for an in-game league event. Blitzcrank's Poro Roundup was a running side-scroller arcade game released for a short period of time on Android, iOS, and PC to celebrate the release of 2015's brand new Battle Boss and Arcade skins, and is not only one of the most beloved games on this list, but is also one of the most fleshed out, as there's plenty of content even after its conclusion. The premise of the game revolved around saving as many Poros as possible while both collecting power-ups and coins, as well as navigating obstacles as a Poro protecting Blitzcrank fleeing from the clutches of a very angry Baron, even if the way the Poros were saved didn't seem to be the most humane way of doing things. As you sprint with your robot legs across the regions of Runeterra, both new Poros and new champions are introduced based on discovering new regions, and the mechanics involved with these additions certainly add to the complexity of the game. As though the game begins with a relatively simple technique of just capturing Poros as fast as possible, as the pace quickens, these fluffy friends begin to come in all shapes and sizes, such as Poros who spontaneously combust into flames or ones who just need to rest their little legs for a minute. And as if trying to wrangle these furry Freljordians wasn't challenging enough of a task on its own, you'll need to do your Poro sitting all while trying to take down a total of 10 different champions plus a final boss fight over the course of your adventure. Such challenges include escaping Lissandra's frozen clutches, catching Katarina as she dashes from dagger to dagger, and clocking a traumatized orphan after you take away her stuffed bear. However, if you manage to beat all of these challenges and more, all while racking up Poros, power-ups, and points, you'll finally have the chance to emerge as the Fluffball's true protector by dramatically decapitating Captain Baron and freeing all your friends from inside, which is kinda gross, but the game still isn't quite over yet. If you complete the game as Blitzcrank, Thresh is unlocked with the ability to grab multiple Poros in a row, and if you beat the game as Thresh, Nautilus is unlocked with the ability to hook two lanes at a time, and if you manage to beat the game again with Nautilus 2, you can play as Corky Rider Irv, who doesn't seem to share the same love of Poros as the others. And as you may have noticed, these champions are all being played with different skins, as the coins you collect on your runs can be used to buy these cosmetics with an additionally rare Rusty Blitzcrank skin that can only be unlocked after completing all 50 achievements. But at least the developers of this game didn't have just 48 hours to create the whole concept from nothing except some assets like the remaining entries on this list, which are all much, much more obscure games that are less documented as they're all products from the Riot Thunderdome. The Thunderdome was essentially a 48 hour game development marathon that was hosted for multiple years within Riot's offices in which teams consisting of a wide variety of rioters came together to create their own individual league based 
Microsoft's products in just two days time. And while many of these games were never intended to be played by those outside the company, some for a brief period of time were actually publicly accessible, and some of them even led to permanent additions to League, which we still see today. Zig's Arcade Blast is arguably the most polished game to have come out of the Thunderdome, and for having only two days to make this game, it has some pretty remarkable features throughout. The concept behind the game's first couple levels is simple. Playing as Ziggs, your objective is to destroy all the enemies in a given stage as fast as possible while avoiding death and, of course, pulling up a ton of things on your path to unlock a portal to the next level. However, things begin to heat up quickly, and quite literally, as once you've completed the initial two stages, you're placed into a boss fight chamber against Battle Boss Brand who plays significantly differently than the prior two levels. With fire raining down upon you, not only are you required to dodge his barrage of attacks, but additionally, you need to hit his occasional weak points in order to finish off this fiery foe, and upon completion, you'll receive a chest of what else but a lot of Doran's rings for your hard work. And inserting my personal opinion here, I could see a world where this would inspire the later creation of the Riot Forge game Hextech Mayhem, but if you want something that one for one inspired a part of League, look no further than the Crime Fighters of Demacia Vice Squad, a game so lost to time that the only surviving footage of it is recorded on TVs. This brawler beat em up stars Garen Stryker and Lucian Phoenix as the tough, iconic Vice inspired crime busters who, as a duo, work together under the Demacia Police Department in its Little Ionia district, gunning to take down the henchmen been doing the bidding of a certain familiar crime boss. By utilizing various input combinations, you would fight crime in the back streets while comboing iconic champion abilities that charged up an ultimate brawler, which, when full, could be used to truly lay down the law. Working in tandem with your partner on duty, once you are finished with the lowly street thugs, the main event would pit you two against nightclub owner and feared crime boss, Darius, who looked to give you a real run for your money. And while this game was of course made in the impressive time span of just 48 hours, its legacy remains preserved to this day on the Rift, as in the summer of 2019, we saw the introduction of the amazing Demacia Vice Garen and Lucian skins, playing clear homage to this lost gem of a game. But Demacia Vice Squad wasn't the only game from that year's Thunderdome that made its way into the public's hands, nor was it the only one that required two players, as Project Jinx and Lucian teamed up to fight waves of enemies in an arena as part of the flashy shooting survival game Super Arcade Gunner X. And though even less footage of this game even exists than Demacia Squad, the rules of this game did seem to be pretty straightforward. With two players in an arena, one playing as Jinx and the other as Lucian, you must successfully fend off 10 waves of enemies who possess a variety of both ranged and melee attack methods while also simultaneously avoiding fatally dangerous Tetris inspired pieces that force players to adapt to the constantly changing terrain. But not all is doom and gloom for the duo, as various power ups and resources appear throughout the map that can transform your feudal weaponry into a shroom shooting grenade launcher or an enemy charring flamethrower to really bring the heat to the hordes approaching from all sides. And a similar more evolved version of the game with new gimmicks came to fruition around a year or so later with the introduction of the now rebranded Project Execute, a more spacious, well-designed map that is unfortunately so good looking that it's hard to capture using recording software as it wasn't fully optimized during its short time in production. With that said, Project Execute does add more to the gameplay formula of its predecessor by adding character boosts between levels, swapping out the Tetris terrain for more static but still actively changing barriers, level randomization, and the chaotically fun ability to layer power-ups. Plus, as you may have noticed, there was now a single-player option as well, and while Lucian remained as a headliner, Vane filled Jinx's role as his counterpart for two-person play. But if you'd prefer to chill out by the waves with a friend in a light-hearted take on the classic video game Pong, Super Zackball has the visual and gameplay refresh that nobody asked for yet couldn't be happier play. Just like in Pong, you would control one of four pool party characters as pool party Zack ricocheted between you and your opponent until he slipped by one player. However, as you may have expected, there is a catch to how the hits work in this game. Though it may seem minor at first, you could actually hit Zack up in the air to realign your shot or throw your opponent off rhythm as a method of mixing up shots as well as making Zack more controllable than a traditional Pong ball would normally be. And in order to win the game, you must score 15 points, however from my research I believe there is a bug that award points sometimes incorrectly, but even if that's the case, the remembrance of Pool Party Tarek during those 48 stressful hours is what ultimately we should really be focusing on. And even if you're somehow not a fan of Pool Party Tarek, the game Star Guard Guardian Insomnia certainly lives up to its name in the sense that it is no sleeper of a title. Starring as the ever-rebellious Jinx, this game is a star-powered shoot-em-up which your goal is to rack up as many points as possible, killing enemies before the conclusion of the final boss so that your score tops the arcade-style leaderboard. After weaving through a seemingly endless onslaught of projectiles from enemies such as ZZ Rot Portal Bugs and Butterfly Kogma, if you've managed to survive in one piece, you'll have to successfully land the killing blow to Belkaz using either your bullets or rockets to shred him down.
out. And of course, once he's slain, you'll want to be speedrunning as many points as you possibly can because who doesn't love some good old fashioned gaming competition? And getting back to that surprise I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, I actually have downloads for Cho'Gath Eats the World and Astro Teemo down in the description, but before you grab that, consider subscribing if you enjoyed the content, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, or even leave a dislike if you didn't like the video and comment how I can improve the content. Um, but yeah, with that being said, hope you guys have a great rest of your day or night. Enjoy playing those games, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later!